there's power in simplification. Not because you can't handle the complex, but because too much noise drowns out the meaning. It gets in the way of the things that actually make the difference. Our blessing and curse is the finitude of our time. So by default, that makes the word no a gatekeeper to the contentment we feel in our lives. What are you keeping out? What are you saving space for? Clarity is not a luxury, but a necessity. And when one has limited capacity, they, they must both cherish and protect it. So why does this matter? It matters because when you simplify things, the path is never as intimidating. The problem is never unsolvable. The opportunity is never too far away. It matters because we dress the solutions up in irrelevant detail and then call them the problem. We don't see things as what they are. We see them as stories. We tell ourselves we see too much. And it just so happens that the biggest leaps forward one can take in life are the result of uh, not secret formulas or hidden answers, but in freeing ourselves of that excess. Saying no to the wrong things so that we can say yes to the right things. Underneath the stacks and accumulation of nothing is something. There's something to the notion that the road to recovery is always a single decision away. That it's already there. But you just haven't been able to acknowledge, to choose it. When life becomes convoluted, there's this tendency to think, I am the problem. I am broken. I am incapable of X or Y or Z. And it's like, no, you've just let so much in that what was once obvious is now buried. You're looking at the giant ocean before you, forgetting that a very tiny boat can traverse it. Basics. Let's ask the question, where is it I most want to go? And what would one step in that direction look like? Sometimes we have to go knowing that mile 10 will have its monsters and mile 50 will have its setbacks. But to not take step one, in anticipation of those future problems, of something way down the road is letting that excess in. Simplicity is the goal, simplicity. Ask yourself, can you start? Right? Beginning grants you one of the greatest weapons to possess, an ability to adjust, the ability to adapt, the ability to utilize the now. And this is not to dismiss the pain and difficulty associated with our most challenging times. It's to remind you that during those times you feel lost or closed in, you don't need to reinvent the world to your left and right. It's not bigger than you. So much of the time it's about composing yourself enough to reach out for the light switch that will illuminate the path just enough for you to look up and walk right out the front door. Brene Brown has said, courage starts with showing up and letting ourselves be seen. It's one of my favorite ideas because to me it's symbolic of a building process. Taking what would otherwise be blank space, nothingness, and stepping into it. Believing in yourself enough to say, there's a void here and I can fill it. I'm strong enough to show myself to the world, my ideas to the world, my work 
to the world, I have, in Bernays' words, the courage to be seen. Seven years ago, in 2016, I wrote about uh, my first experience with this epiphany in a video called, fittingly, Courage. I talk about my light bulb moment where I'm walking down the street and realize everything around me, all of it, was built by people with enough self-belief to think I can add value to the world. I can, in one form or another, take a blank space and create within those parameters something beautiful, something meaningful. I, not him or her, I can be the reason things change for the better. You know, that's a hard notion to grasp you know, because it's overwhelming to put faith or stock into ideas. You're just writing yourself IOU notes, right? And it's particularly difficult when things take time or don't go the way you want them to, immediately you start to feel crazy. And you know for a fact those around you can't see it or understand. How could they? This is a you thing, right? It exists in your head and your head only. But that building to your left, that song you're listening to, the book you're reading, that car you're driving, these things exist because those who brought them to life survived the storm. They believed and hung in long enough, pushed beyond the self-doubt. They escaped that maze that chews up and spits out so many. And a few weeks ago, I was in Vegas for a podcast and uh, doing some marketing for a new venture with a friend and business partner. We're on the balcony looking out over Vegas. And we're both inspired in that moment because we're reminded how big the world is and how everything below us is a product of courage, right? Opportunity captured and acted upon by those who believed in themselves to do it. And Tyler's pointing down to different things, right? Those offices were built by someone. Every light built by someone. Every car going down the road built by someone emphasizing just that beautiful reality. It's all possible, but you have to initiate it. Right? And it's incredible how things come full circle. Seven years ago, the scary thing was putting my voice out there. You know, fast forward a little bit, same game, just different stakes. It's like, it will always be true. If you want to increase your impact, do not forget two things. One, it's possible for you. And two, it takes courage. Sure, self-belief alone, it won't get you through the finish line. But without it, there is no race to begin with. There is no starting point. Only dreams, only wishing, only hoping. Courage says, Everything around me was brought to life by people with the strength to convert nothing into something. And those people, they are not gods. They are no different or better or greater than you or I. They see blank space and ask, why not me? Why couldn't I leave a mark or make a change? And that's just it. You can be the one. Not some other guy, not your neighbor, not the folks on social media, you. But you have to believe it and be willing to trudge through the storm. You have to be willing, as difficult as it might seem at first, to be seen. To step out of the darkness and into the light, you have that courage within you. So remind yourself that one, it's there, and two, it's who you are. And I promise you, the world will change around you. It's in our moment of greatest distress 
that we must find it within ourselves to see that which is difficult to see. It's when things seem hopeless, tragic. It's when we feel lost that we forget a universal truth. Behind every struggle, no matter how big, there is a win, an answer, an opportunity for recreation. See, it's very easy in the midst of a storm to forget that it will pass. The dark skies block out the light, so we forget the warmth of the sun. And the wind and the rain, it forces us inside, so we forget the perfection that is simply breathing in the cool air. We forget that all storms have one thing in common. They come and they go. They are temporary. And what they leave is hope, answers, the clearest, brightest of skies. See, I'm not asking you to see something that's not there. I'm not asking you to imagine or live a life of make-believe. I'm reminding you of what you already know exists behind those clouds. Better days, your solution, your victory. I'm asking you to look to precedent. Because every day leading up to now has had its adversity. The road to the current moment was paved with trials and tribulations. And what you've done every day until now is figure it out. Find a way. How many times do you have to prove to yourself that you have what it takes? that you'll be okay, that within the depths of your soul are answers to any and every problem that you face. I know things aren't easy. Maybe they even seem bigger, scarier, more overwhelming than they ever have. But as adversity grows, so does your resilience. And I'm not sitting here giving you something new or an answer you didn't already possess. All I'm doing is reminding you how incredible you are, how much you've already overcome and how capable you are of conquering whatever is next. Sometimes in life, the difference between okay and great or stagnation and growth it is only a change in perspective. It is how you look at the world and your place within it. That little voice in your head reminding you that you are capable of things beyond your current comprehension. That your perceived best is a fraction of what you're capable of. Reality is manageable. It's always manageable. It's the fear that if we let it, will be our demise. And life's too short to bow down to a monster that doesn't even really exist, that we created ourselves. So let's commit to being the ones who find calm when others panic and see opportunity where others see hardship and see what can be gained when others remain fixated on what has been lost. I love to simplify, to find clarity in that which appears overwhelming and complex. So here's the formula. You minus negative thoughts equals infinite possibility. You are capable of handling anything life throws at you. In terms of potential and resources and ability, you are, you can overcome. The only thing that can make a situation debilitating or permanent is you deciding it so. Therefore, the obstacle will never be life. It will be your thoughts about life. Your thoughts determine how you react. That is reality. Is it a lost job? 
or an opportunity to begin again, to grow, to fall in love with something you've always wanted to do? Is it lost time, loneliness, tragic seclusion, or a chance to write chapter one of your book, scene one of your movie, lay the first brick of what will become your empire? I've been sad and I've been happy. And I've been broke and I've had money. And I've felt alone and I've felt loved. But through it all, every step, every trial, every tribulation, I've come out stronger, battle-hardened, cognizant of the fact that happiness was a choice. Money is reacquirable, that some people go, but the ones that matter stay a part of you forever. Life is a gift. It's a gift when things are hard. It is a gift when they are easy. It is always a gift. So don't let your losses define you. If you get back up, it is nothing short of a victory. Armor that you now wear as you make your way into the world. A world that can push you down, but it certainly can't keep you there. Not if you don't let it. For your mind, your body, your soul, made of the same elements that surround you, the same stars comprising the universe, they have equipped you to weather any storm, outlast any earthly dilemma, do anything and be anyone. Never forget that. Never forget who you are. So you're stepping onto a rocket ship, leaving planet Earth, and you have one message to give to the world before you take off. What is it? For me, it's an easy one. It's that life is not as serious as we make it out to be. It's the most important thing I've learned. And perhaps the simplicity of that message might make people uh, a little uneasy or take them by surprise, right? How exactly is it helpful? Well, I'll explain, right? Waking up every day is not an obligation or requirement. It's not another test or, or make or break audition to impress those around you. It's a gift. It's a challenge. It's something to be explored. If the odds of being alive, living, breathing, are one in 400 trillion, you've won. You have, as you sit or stand right now, already done the miraculous. So why not cash in? Why not live, push boundaries? To live scared, to play safe or do nothing with your life is like winning the lottery and keeping that bag full of cash under your bed for the rest of your life because you're scared of what could happen to it. It defeats the purpose entirely. And I'm not exaggerating, this mentality has changed my life. If I lose, who cares? If people laugh, who cares? If I have to swallow my pride and be broke for a few years, who cares? If I'm the unsure one, the one who doesn't know what the immediate future looks like, fine, who cares? I'll take the upside. I'll take the fun, the hard work, and the adventure. I talk about this all the time, I'll never forget. Walking into this bar with my friends six years ago now, I just left my job, right? and I remember I'm, I'm talking to this girl at the bar, story time here, and uh, she asks me what I do for a living, right? because of course she does. And you know, I tell her I just left my job, I got this really cool idea for a YouTube channel, I think it's gonna be incredible, and I, I'll never forget how fast that convo shut down. Right? Blink, and she'd walked away, and I thought, you know what, this is perfect. I'm gonna remember this probably for the rest of my life. Why, because it's a symbol it's a sign that the immediate is what stops us from the best things down the road. Leaving my job, as, as hard as that maybe one or two year stretch was, was the best thing I've ever done. I am living exponentially better than I was before I had the courage to make that move. See, if life is about not screwing up, then yes, 
I'm still in that cubicle getting yelled at for including too much color in my PowerPoint presentations, but that's not what life is. Life is opportunity, not hiding so that you don't lose. No, it's about making something where you are with what you have. And my friends, there is so much out there. There is a win on the other side of every door you walk through, even when it's hard to see. Right now is a perfect time to be talking about this. A little crazy coronavirus has people being quarantined, everyone freaking out. Guys, take a step back and find the opportunity. I just read the other day, Shakespeare wrote King Lear when he was being quarantined because of the plague. There is always a win. Use the time, find solutions. Maybe you've always wanted to start a business. Great, take a small step, create the business page on Facebook, do something small, get the ball rolling. See, when life is a game, you're finding ways to win. Why do all these entrepreneurs talk about the hardship they've encountered before they found success? Because they knew that losses wouldn't define them. But in life, just like in a game, you win and you lose. But what happens is, through repetition, you get better and better, and the wins start accumulating, becoming more substantial and consistent. See, most decisions, and let's say worst case scenario, you take the leap and things implode. Let's just be dramatic for a second. Everything goes wrong, loss, 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 loss. The reality is 99% of your decisions, they're reversible. If you don't get the intended result, you can backpedal and adjust. You know what's irreversible though? Inaction. You know what you can't improve upon? Steps you've never taken. You can't be propelled by dreams that are hanging out in your head. Living scared is looking at yourself in the mirror and saying, I hope nothing goes wrong today. Living fully is looking in the mirror and saying, I'm going to make something significant today. I'm going to take risks. I'm going to find solutions. I'm going to propel myself forward. So that, as I make my way onto this rocket ship, would be my message. Stop playing to avoid losing and start playing to win. Life is not serious. It's not a standardized test. It's a blank page waiting for a story. And stories are written by the bold, the risk takers, the ones who stop wishing and go out and make things happen. Wrong actions can be corrected, improved upon, but life through a lens of scarcity is a sealed fate. So how about living like this is the only life you have? Like each day is a metaphorical currency that you can't take with you to your grave. It must be spent, it must be cherished and utilized fully. So here's to not only dreaming, but finding the courage to delve headfirst into a journey so great that no stone is left unturned. No day is without the magic of your creation. Because if life is serious, it is a serious opportunity to live fully and nothing less. You're not here just to get by, to check a box. No, you're here for something different. Maybe it's your desire to chase down that sunrise while the rest of the world sleeps, to embrace the difficult, the inconvenient, in exchange for that little bit of glory you'll soon feel as you pour your morning coffee and start your day. 
Or maybe it's your fascination with the fact that every time you ask yourself if there's more, if you have anything left, the answer always seems to be yes. And maybe that's it. That what you're capable of in a world of finitude and constraint and limitation seems to be the only thing with absolutely no bounds. The human soul undergoes a sort of transformation, if you will, every time we look around at what currently is and decide it will soon be the gateway to something more. And that's life's best kept secret, the word decide. The idea that we choose whether to accept things as they are or to change them. That we have within us the ability to push further than we've ever pushed. To find what was once only existent in our imaginations. And this will always be true. You get what you seek. What you're willing to endure. And while some see this trade-off as too much, as a cost far too expensive, others see it as the chance of a lifetime, the opportunity to give some of you so that you can grow and improve all of you. See, each footstep is far more than a point on the earth. It's a declaration, a commitment to give more than most would give so that you can feel what only a few will feel. So remember that when things seem trivial, when it's easier to call it a day or turn it around, that the simple act of continuing forward puts you in the minority. It's positioning you to experience life as it should be lived. You're here to both cherish the now and cash it in. Let the value of your courage compound. Let your resilience remind you just how much control you have and how much is waiting for you. If only you say yes when it hurts, move forward when the path is unclear, believe when the possibility only exists in your head. You're here because while it may be easier to watch life go by from the cheap seats, the risk, the sacrifice, is worth being able to look back someday down the road and know that at least you had the courage to play the game. Thoreau said that most men lead lives of quiet desperation and go to the grave with the song still in them. Probably an astute observation, as most death is potential put to rest. Most stories were stories about what could have been. Perhaps simply because it's easier on the ego to talk about what life could have looked like if you cared enough to shape it than to have actually put skin in the game and fallen short. But there lies the misconception. To step into life's chaos with the hopes of taming it is why we're here. And yeah, obviously it hurts to fail. It hurts uh, to be vulnerable, to put yourself out there especially when it seems as though all eyes are on you. But that hurt is a fraction of the hurt the road describes. Falling hurts, but it hurts less than wishing you had the courage to fall. Ridicule, it hurts. But it hurts less than being the one on the sidelines pointing the finger and simultaneously longing 
for the courage to take action in their own life. What keeps us from going? What keeps us from building? We know life is short. We know regret is the ultimate pain. We know how much opportunity is out there, so why? Why would we not go? Why would we designate dreaming to sleep? In his famous Man in the Arena speech, Teddy Roosevelt said this, it is not the critic who counts not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs and comes up short again and again because there is no effort without error or shortcoming but who knows the great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement and who at worst, if he fails, at least he fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who knew neither victory nor defeat. No one who is content in their own life will go out of their way to bring you down. There was never a critic deeply immersed in their own journey who took the time to mock or scoff at the man in the arena. I think our fear is pointed in the wrong direction. It shouldn't be concentrated on or focused on the opinions of those who have not yet themselves walked through those doors. No, the fear should be letting life go by without ourselves walking through. The fear should be contributing to Thoreau's statistic of quiet desperation. The one most men face. But you are not most men or most women. Not because you were given some special power or status, but because you decided. You can choose not to be like most people. Basic math, taking into account the number of people in the stands versus the number of people on the stage or court or in the arena, well, it tells a tale of courage. Anyone can sit in the stands. Anyone can. Anyone can from the nosebleeds decide whether to clap or point or boo or cheer. But who suits up and enters the game? Who looks at the finitude of life and says, this is my reason to start building, to put it all on the line? Because if I fail, it will mean I was one of the few who looked around and said, this isn't bigger than I am. This world is not predefined. It's being built in real time by those willing to walk through the doors and step into the arena. Not the critics, but the doers. And look, everyone has a thing, right? I don't know what that thing is for you, but you do. You probably think about it all the time, dream about it every day. You probably know it's where your heart is pulling you. Do not let your life become a statistic. Don't you dare go to that graveyard having been someone who held on tighter to excuses than to what mattered most in your life. So go. Step into the arena, and if they point, let them point. If they criticize, let them criticize. Your concern isn't with those wishing they had the courage to step through those doors themselves. It's not about them, it's about you. 
It's about understanding the beauty and the opportunity and the freedom contained in life. For those who find the courage to reach out and take it. You weren't put here to live in the shadows of life. To exist beyond the sun's grasp, to stay on the outside, looking in. No, you weren't put here to live in the shadows of life. It's important to remember the difference between now and forever, the distinction between today and tomorrow, because from time to time they look deceptively similar. Especially when we inevitably find ourselves in the darkest of times. When despite our best efforts, our world is reduced to shadows, void of hope. When tomorrow and today have merged into one endless entity, it always seems to be in these times that we forget that right now is just a moment, not an assigned permanent, but a bridge to something great. As Viktor Frankl says, if there is meaning in life at all, then there must be meaning in suffering. We all suffer, we all hurt, we all go through periods of time where we can't see or hear or feel anything beyond the darkness we find ourselves in, but it's there. Darkness cannot be defined without light. It's in the definition. Darkness is a partial or total absence of light. They need each other, darkness and light. The one thing that can bring darkness to its knees is out there, everywhere, all around it. And if there was ever a reason to be hopeful, enthusiastic, if there's ever a reason to believe, it's that a new life is always a light switch away. It's that darkness is as temporary as the day. And the antidote requires only that you believe it to be true only that you find the resolve to reach one foot out, to remind yourself of the sun's warmth and the infinite beauty of a world beyond this temporary darkness. Because you, you weren't put here to live in the shadows of life, but to reemerge like a rocket through the Earth's stratosphere to swing from star to star like life is a playground and you make the rules. And I think when we look back, we'll be nothing but grateful for those times of darkness. They, in a sense, prepared us for the road ahead by giving us what we need most. Perspective. Life lessons, a roadmap to follow. Because you don't appreciate the light, the sun, the clear blue skies, the wind on your face, the sound of the waves, the chirping of the birds. No, you don't see the beauty in any of that until even if for a moment it is taken away. You don't learn about life's abundance until you come face to face with scarcity. You don't learn to give until you've had your world taken away. You don't learn to love until you've experienced heartbreak. You don't learn courage until you've been overcome by fear. You don't learn to grow until you've been truly stuck. You don't learn to believe until you've looked in the mirror and doubt peers back. You don't know who you are until you learn what you're not. See, everyone finds themselves having wandered into the dark, sometimes of their own volition, sometimes of fate. 
but like leaves changing color in the fall. The earth on its journey around the sun, a wave emerging and falling back into that which it came. It is not an end, but a beginning. Life's way of preparing us for what's to come, introducing us to the infinite possibility of tomorrow because you weren't put here to live in the shadows of life, but to emerge from them, to light up the world. No, you weren't put here to live in the shadows of life. What's one thing I wish I knew when I was younger that I think people could benefit from today? What single piece of information could have the biggest impact? And I spent some time thinking about this question and the more I think about it, the more the answer becomes incredibly apparent. It's that you are in control of your own life, your own destiny, your own future. And when you take accountability for yourself, life changes, period. And if you thought that was obvious, I would advocate taking a look around. Maybe a stroll through social media, the Twitters and Instagrams and TikToks of today. And no, that's not the real world, but it's certainly a microcosm of the real world. What do you see? Well, you see chronic blame. I don't like where I'm at or things are, so that must be your fault or their fault or someone else's fault. You see people looking everywhere but in the mirror, actually seeking out victimhood because that's what brings the attention. That's today's currency. It's much easier to be the victim than the hero because being the hero means you have to sacrifice something. It's people saying the news or some institution or the federal government is the problem. And if those things would only change, then we'd be good. Let me explain why I think this mentality is self-sabotage. And why I would take younger me by the hand and I would say, listen to what I'm about to tell you. Where you start is often outside of our control. Let's be real, life is not fair. We don't all get dealt the same hand. But this next part, as I once heard Will Smith articulate beautifully, is the same for everyone. What you decide to do about it right now is what matters. And that is the control that we all have. It's not your fault where you start, but it's your responsibility to choose where you end up. You can shake your fist at the sky or you can start building a life that matters to you. It's easy to blame the world, to be the victim, at least in the short term. But a fulfilling life is about meaning about fighting for something valuable, about evolving into the version of yourself that you always knew in your heart you could be. You just had to unlock. See, no one down the road was ever happy with themselves for blaming the world while they bitterly remained stagnant. I would say to a younger me, worry less about how you're perceived and think more about who you are what you're capable of, because that you can always control. Stop losing yourself in the news or whatever the narrative of the day is. That has nothing to do with your progression, has nothing to do with your very next step. So sure, be informed, but do more, consume less. Because by and large, it's a distraction. And I would say the government, which has become the crux of our discourse today, transforming into a modern day religion. Look, the government's job is not to give you anything. 
It's there to protect what's inherent to you already. Your right to live life on your terms. See, satisfaction, it will come from good habits. It will come from self-belief. It will come from taking risks and failing and learning. It will come from the courage to step out into a world that's completely unknown. It will never come from a self-interested politician or body in Washington, red or blue. So stop whining about political optics and focus on where your two feet are taking you right now. Because I promise in the grand scheme of things, that's what matters. That is your strength. Expecting someone else to come along and change your life is like screaming into an abyss. I would say to my younger self, when you start looking around and seeing what everyone else has and beating yourself up for not being as good or feeling like you're behind, look, it's great that their success motivates you, but dwelling on it won't make your life better. Life is a race between you and you. It's a fight between yourself and those thoughts that constantly knock on the door, looking to settle into your psyche. If you defeat that demon, you'll be where you want to be, regardless of where others are. You're right where you need to be, so keep your head up and keep moving forward. I'd explain that To become something more, to change, requires a sacrifice that feels so substantial, so big at first, that it bullies most people into staying right where they are. That to become something new, you have to learn to play the fool, to get humbled. You have to change your relationship with short-term failure. And that's not easy. But taking control of your life is not supposed to be easy only worth it. They're different. And I can certainly look back at my own life, think about the times where I was so busy pointing out that I didn't even think to point the finger at myself. I was so worried about life being unfair that I existed in this temporary state of paralysis, the whole time not knowing that I could have been stepping forward. Could have been tapping into the single greatest power I possess, control over my own life. See, every time you feel anger or the need to blame those around you, you're taking the spotlight off of what matters and placing it on things detrimental to where you want to be, to your journey and your future. Even the most unjust, arbitrary things, let's say you didn't get that promotion you were beyond qualified for or you were mistreated by someone or things didn't go the way you wanted them to, you can fill in that blank. But refusing to blame others and immediately taking responsibility, again, even in a situation like that, it gives you one of the greatest advantages in life. It gives you that gift of control. You can now assess the situation. You can now ask yourself, hey, what can I do to change this? You can delve into the why, find the lessons and the value. You can come back and reapproach this thing stronger. Because to blame others, to take on that role of victim, it's essentially living life in the passenger seat. It might be easier, it might be less work, less responsibility, but what you never have is control over where that car goes. But when you own it, when you say, hey, maybe it's not my fault, but look, it's mine now. It's my responsibility, the good, the bad, every aspect of my life. It puts you in position to change things, to take the wheel and reroute to a destination of your choosing. So that would be my message to the world. I know it's not an easy road. I know life is unfair. I know things aren't perfect, but the best thing you can ever do for yourself is say, you know what, this is mine to own. And I'm going to look around for that light switch that will create momentum. That little decision that will get the ball rolling, I'm not going to sit back, shake my fist and blame life. I'm going to walk out that door and create life. That's where you'll find what you're truly looking for.
What can you be the best in the world at? Life is a complex place. Complexity sometimes means confusion. It means we forget the big picture. What's our purpose? What are we chasing? What are we bringing to the world? What can you be the best in the world at? It's a little question I try and ask myself every day because I know if I stay close to it, my decision will have far greater impact. There will be more meaning in life. See, it pushes away the things that are appealing in the short term, but really don't take us anywhere in the long term. Because one of the coolest aspects of human nature is our ability to illuminate what matters and, well, mitigate what doesn't. Helps us focus on what's important. We need to go to the grocery store while well, we step out the front door, paying attention to nothing but the task at hand, not the objects to our left or right. We don't know what colors the cars were that passed us by or the plants we walked by. We don't think about the blood pumping through our bodies, making it all possible as we walk to the car. We don't even see the car as its metallic components, as it really is. We see it as our portal to a place that has the food. See, we are blind but at the same time have this beautiful gift of vision. We see the path right to what's most important. So let's leverage that. And what I think we need to remember is to identify in our own lives what that means with regard to our purpose and the context of what we are becoming. See, every day I hear people talk about followers on social media. Right? How do I get attention? How do I get noticed? How do I market myself or my brand to the world? How do I stand out? And every time I hear that, I always have this little internal reaction, like a voice saying, that's just so wrong. It's so backwards. You stand out by adding value to the world, by being good at what you do. It's that simple. And so look at it like this. We'll take a specific example. To so worry about the marketing and the attention and the followers first is like worrying about the transportation of something you don't have yet or that's incomplete. It's like spending all your time worrying about the logistics of a cargo van and having no idea what that van is going to transport. Isn't the product the most important thing? And that's the question I ask myself when I'm caught up in something flashy or maybe out of line with my big picture. To make sure I'm on track in this crazy world, if social media disappeared tomorrow, are you good enough at what you do that you could take that product or service or skill set to another platform and start again? And if you're not, fine. But are you working towards it? Those are the parameters that we should all live between. Everything else tends to work itself out. Steve Martin's quoted as saying, be so good they can't ignore you. And that's what I find so exciting. The opportunity, the chance to build something sustainable. That's why this is a long-term play. And in a world where so much emphasis is put on perception, what's the reality? What's the story? Right? The pictures are great on the surface, but what's the, the value that resides below that, underneath? What are you working tirelessly day and night to be exceptional at? What are you reading to build yourself up as a force to be reckoned with, as a powerful, valuable individual? See, my world, a lot of what I do is immersed in social media, which is why it's so important that I remember the perspective that I step out. Social media is not the product. I'm thinking much bigger than that, and I hope you are too, whether it's academics or sports or art. What is your thing? What's going to be your arena? Where are you unstoppable? Where you add so much value that the world has to stop. Where sure, you can capture it on social media, but you can talk about it face to face with clients and family and friends and strangers on the sidewalk. You can write about it, teach about it. Where it's so much a part of you that the phrase competent doesn't even do it justice. That's where greatness lives. Not in screaming for attention or creating a facade. Those things don't stand the test of time. I'm talking about being truly remarkable. And we all have that ability. We're all capable of mastery in some area, moving towards something that matters. We just have to make the choice to own it, to see the world and all its opportunity for what it is, to begin. And what better a time than now?
relax, you're here. That's a clever little sign hanging above the sidewalk, right at the border where Pompano Beach turns into Lauderdale by the sea. And as it turns out, that spot is almost directly in the middle of one of my favorite running routes, almost exactly halfway, which at first I found kind of annoying, being that no, I was not where I wanted to be or intended to be, and no, I certainly could not relax. The heat and the sun and the miles to go always begged to differ, right? False advertising. I was not, in fact, here. After all, here in this context suggests one has arrived. And how can arrival feel like missing pieces and unknowns? How can it feel like so far to go? In the valley of despair, can one really be here? But the more and more I took that route, the more the little sign became a landmark in and of itself. Something that I looked forward to, its own little destination, a point in which I could both look over my shoulder and realize how far I've come, as well as find reassurance for the journey ahead. It was a manufactured pat on the back, a change in narrative. Because here's the deal, it's easy to feel lost in the middle. It just is. It's easy to feel empty-handed after days or months or years. It's easy to fall into the trap of never enough. But if you step back and adjust your perspective, you see it for exactly what it is. A beautiful process. Here doesn't have to be the predetermined destination. Here can be the culmination of all the steps it took you to arrive at the now. Here can be the lessons learned along the way, can be the reassurance that while you're not done, you've overcome every obstacle up until this point and there's no reason to think you won't continue that pattern moving forward. So relax, you're here. Perhaps here being a place of trust, the ability to look in the mirror and sure, see your opportunity areas, but way more importantly, see your brilliance, your tenacity, your courage. After all, when armed with those traits, It doesn't matter where you're dropped off at or placed. There's no finish line that's too far away, no mountaintop that's beyond you. Where you end up in the game of life will be directly correlated to the level of trust you have in yourself to play. So relax, you're here. Maybe here being that point where you can make the leap you've always wanted to make. Where you can feel confident that the unknowns don't stop you, they inspire you. Where you see the past as proof that your limitations exist only where you decide they do. And here is not a wall or a barrier, but a springboard to the next great adventure where you find that spark of inspiration to push against life and see what comes back, to test the waters, ride the wave, that self-identified beginning that lights a fire in your soul. So relax, you're here. Maybe here being the point where you realize you've been selling yourself just a little bit short where the image of yourself that you've created in your head is lacking. The metaphorical shoes you've been wearing have been outgrown. And here is where you change them for something that better suits you. Where you make a contract with yourself to endure the growing pains and the discomfort, where you willingly pick up the pace in exchange for that adrenaline rush associated with leveling up. 
the excitement of the wind on your face, the increased speed opening up your mind to the realization that you haven't even scratched the surface with regard to your potential. And that alone is a gift. So relax, you're here. Maybe here is a reminder to simply enjoy the now. To stop thinking only about what's down the road and look around. To realize that the future is just a fantasy about what might come. And the past is a retelling of stories that have already occurred. Making your experience on this planet only right now. A culmination of right now is stacking up to comprise your entire life. And while the destination is the purpose that pulls you through, the very idea of a destination is essentially trading a current right now for a future one. So maybe look around and enjoy what you have. Appreciate the moment in all its glory. Relax, you're here. See, whatever here means to you, it's essential that we know, even in the heart of the storm, the chaos of battle mid-journey, that you have everything you need, not just to survive, but to adjust and re-examine to identify what means the most to you and follow that like your life depends on it. Relax, you are here. Here being the inflection point that separates the past from the future, that cuts your negative self-talk and those self-imposed limitations down to the nothings that they are. For me, that sign and its message have become a reminder of the duality of life. The tightrope that I have to walk between chasing down the dreams that pull me out of bed every morning and simultaneously cherishing the moments that comprise the journey. Sure, it's the halfway point of my run, and sure, I have ways to go. Sure, celebrating now would be counterproductive, but breathe in. Look what I get to do. Look where I am. Look what I have. They say we live not for the destination, but the journey, and I think that's right. I think in a way, the finish line might just be the excuse we give in order to experience the steps that take us there. It's the chase, the pursuit, and so relax, you are here, reminds me that I'm in the thick of the good stuff. Ed Helms, at a commencement speech, quotes his character from The Office, Andy Bernard, as saying, I wish there was a way to know you were in the good old days before you've actually left them. Well, this might just be that reminder. Grow to something you've yet to become, but with everything you have, appreciate who you are now. Respect that finish line, but cherish the race. When the time comes and we've reached the end of our days reflecting back, I think there are two successes that I'll identify as I'm reminiscing. First, I don't want to look back and feel regret for a lack of courage. I don't want to wish that I'd been bolder in pursuit of my dreams. No, I want to accomplish the unthinkable, capture the unobtainable. But second, I also don't want, when reflecting back, to realize that I never looked around and enjoyed the ride. That I didn't know what I had the entire time. That when things felt like a lot, I forgot that 
a lot was in and of itself a gift. So when the pressures of life seem to consume us, the expectations overwhelm us, the story disappoints us. Let's find the time to pause, take a breath and relax because it just might be life's way of telling us that we're here.